Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates here on Racing America. The Race Face family of drivers saw action in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, Arca Menards, Trans Am, Pro Late Models, Quarter Midgets, and several dirt races across the country. Don't forget to look for this guy in today's show. Write down the lap number, then go to spotterslap.com, claim your prize, Let's now get to the results. The NASCAR Xfinity Series was at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Alsco Uniform 300. Before we check in on Anthony Alfredo and Sheldon Creed, let's take a virtual lap around Charlotte Motor Speedway in this week's Track Lap with Fast Pasta. Hey everybody, Anthony Alfredo here taking you for a lap around the virtual Charlotte Motor Speedway ahead of this weekend's race on Memorial Day weekend. We're going to start our lap at the start finish line right here as we come through the quad oval and enter turn one. Big arc down to the bottom. This track is super rough so it's pretty hard to handle but if you get to this blue painted line there's a ton of grip on it. It helps the car turn for sure but there's also going to be some PJ1 traction compound which will allow you to move around a lot. But turns three and four has even larger radius, so it's more critical down here even to get to that line, wrap it tight, get a low straight exit, so you can climb over those bumps on off of turn four and onto the front straightaway. That's been your track lap with Fast Pasta around Charlotte Motor Speedway. Thanks, Anthony. As you can see, things happen very quickly on the mile and a half quad oval. Let's now get to the results. We start with Anthony Alfredo, who had dude wipes back on his number 23, our Motorsports Chevy Camaro. The team struggled with balance and qualifying, resulting in a 30th place starting position. Once the green flag dropped, he started to make his march towards the front and finished stage one in 17th and stage two in 12th. On the final pit stop, the team had a crew member over the wall too soon and suffered a penalty and had to start at the tail end of the field on the restart. Let's check in with Anthony for his take on the race. Didn't have the best dude wipe Chevrolet Camaro today, but it was solid enough to drive from the back to the top 12, I think twice. Uh, we just needed to, to stay up there after pit stops. We ended up in the back and got caught up in that wreck and uh, couldn't avoid it, just like last week. So it really stinks because we can't afford that right now, being on the playoff bubble. It's going to be a lot harder for us to make that top 12 and rebound from this. So uh, I guess the goal is to just go try to steal a win somewhere and make it a whole lot easier. Another tough break, getting caught up in someone else's mess. On to Portland International Raceway and some road course racing on Saturday. Sheldon Creed was also at Charlotte Motor Speedway in his number two RCR Wheel and Engineering Chevrolet, where he qualified 18th ran his way to 12th by the end of stage one and was setting eighth at the end of stage two. Sheldon stayed in the top 10 for the remaining part of the race, eventually bringing home a top 10 in eighth. Sheldon is looking forward to returning to the road course at Portland coming off his 10th place finish at Coda earlier this year. We're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, we check in on Connor Mozak who had a busy weekend of racing in both the Arkham Menard series and the Trans Am series. Plus, a big announcement that had him on Fox Sports NASCAR Race Hub. We catch up with Jesse Love and Sheldon Creed, who were having some fun in the micro sprints at Millbridge Speedway. Did the hammer or the showstopper have something for the other NASCAR stars on the dirt? We'll find out when we return with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Joey East and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Connor Mozak had a busy weekend that started with the announcement that he will be making his NASCAR Xfinity debut this weekend at Portland International Raceway for Joe Gibbs Racing in the number 18 Open Eyes Toyota. Talking about a big deal. However, Connor had some racing to do as he pulled double duty, first in the Arkham Menard Series at Charlotte Motor Speedway in the General Tire 150 in his number 23 Brett Holmes Chevrolet. Connor qualified fifth with a lap of 173 miles an hour.
Connor then backed that up by running in the top 10 for the entire race that saw several cautions and crazy restarts, but was able to bring home his best ARCA finish in fourth. Next ARCA race for Connor will be at Iowa Speedway on June 11th. Now on to Lime Rock Park for the Pirelli Trans Am TA2 Series Memorial Day Classic. Because of the conflict with the ARCA race at Charlotte, Connor did not get to practice or qualify his Scott Legacy Racing Nick Taylor Chevy Camaro for Saturday's race and had to start 32nd. Now if that wasn't bad enough, the weather would play a heavy role in tire strategies. We caught up with Connor Monday morning back in Charlotte for his thoughts on the race. So guys, had a uh, lime rock this weekend in the Trans Am race. Uh, we started from the back as I missed qualifying for uh, doing the ARCA race on Friday. But I feel like we still had a good shot. Just was gonna need a couple cautions, uh, but the weather kind of threw a wrench in things and we, and we missed the strategy pretty good. It was a tough call. Uh, we started out on the wets and uh, the track dried up pretty quickly or a dry line came pretty quickly. So slowly people started pitting for slicks and uh, we, we tried to stay up as long as possible because we thought it was gonna rain more later in the race. Um, but we decided to come down and get slicks and that cost us a couple laps uh, as a leader never pitted, uh, which is where I think we just, we would've been better off staying out even with the dry line, hurting our rain tires, just hoping for something to happen. I feel like that was our only shot starting at the rear. Um, but we had really good pace. We were running some of the fastest laps um, when we were out there and then uh, the track started getting wet again later in the race. So we pitted again for, for the rain tires and went another two laps down. Uh, ended up getting one back, but we still were, were three laps down and there wasn't much we could do after that. But um, we got some damage as well, trying to come back to the field and my hood was coming up and it made it really hard to see there at the end. But we had really good speed, just an unfortunate day, really pretty disappointing, I think. But, um, you know, we'll take what we can from it. And uh, we got Mid-Ohio coming up next, so we'll be good there. Up next for the TA2 car, Mid-Ohio, June 23rd through the 26. We now move on to the dirt at Millbridge Speedway, where drivers Jesse Love and Sheldon Creed were having some fun with other NASCAR stars like Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, Brandon Jones, Brett Moffitt, just to name a few of more than 39 drivers who were on hand for two nights of racing. On night one, Jesse qualified fifth, Sheldon 15th, now on to the heats, where only the top three transfer to the A-Main. Both Jesse and Sheldon won their heat races. Then in the A-Main, Jesse finished seventh and Sheldon second. On night two, Jesse qualified sixth and Sheldon ninth. In their heat races, Jesse finished first and Sheldon fourth. Again, both transferring to the A-Mains. Where Jesse finished fourth after battling with Kyle Larson for the win, and Sheldon brought home an 11th place finish. We're going to take another short commercial break. When we return, we have a special interview with Proactive Late Model Driving School. So if you have a young driver ready to transition into a full-bodied race car, you don't want to miss this. We'll be right back with that interview here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Jake Wallman and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Welcome back. Here is the video interview with Proactive Motorsports. I am so excited that we are able to go down to Mobile, Alabama and meet with John Thompson and William Wombles, the owners of Proactive Motorsports. This is a driving school for young drivers that are transitioning from bandoleros, um, quarter midgets, legend cars into a full size late model for the very first time. This is an amazing school. So guys, thank you for being on the show tonight. Thank, thank you for having us, Rod. Thank you, Rod. All right, so the question is, where did this idea come from? We, we know that there's a big need for it. And I <laughs> think now that you guys have kind of brought it out, we really see the need for it. So, so what, where did the idea come from? Well, as brought as a as a parent of a driver who has recently been in 
age bracket racing or two pedal racing. Uh, we, we just kind of wanted to share our experience of the transition and the journey that we personally had. So we just felt that because it, it's a huge, huge step, not only for the driver, but also for the parent. Um, a lot of parents have done all the work themselves. So it's, it's a big step to hand your driver over to somebody for them to take over the reins. Yeah, thank you, John. John and I saw an opportunity to take on our learnings from when we used to race sport, the uh, great sport of auto racing, and to work with up and coming young kids in performance and racing the category, such as you talked about with the legend of Bandolero cars, to transition them into full body pro late models with working clutches, which is a big deal. And we've learned that in the past. I saw this opportunity for myself to continue in auto racing, but in a different context from driving and owning race cars into teaching young racers basic safety and understanding how a full-size race car works. And we also teach business skills both on and off the racetrack. Well, guys, I just want to tell you, I think it's an awesome idea. I mean, as you both know, I work with young drivers and, and, it, and it's always something that we have to address. It's like, okay, where do we send somebody? How do you go out and get a test? Who's willing to put somebody that has no experience into a car. Um, and, and again, some of these young kids have never even driven a stick shift before. So like I said, I applaud you guys. Now, what I do know is that you guys have a couple different classes. So talk to me real quickly about what is involved in a three-day course. So the three-day course, right, we, we start with a safety orientation of the car, how the fire suppression system works how to pre-develop a safe exit plan. We try to share as many scenarios as we can, and that's, that's kind of where we get started with safety. And then we take them through reading the instruments, how the shift pattern on the shifter works, what the gauges do, because th they're coming out of stuff that don't even have instruments or gauges in it. And, and all that's very, very critical. Uh, because that, that's a communication from the car to them to relay information back to the crew chief. Good point, John. Yeah, so parents, if you're out there watching and thinking, well, I can do all this, I just want you to think about something. How many times have you told your young driver something and they just didn't listen? Okay, and then somebody else comes in and tells them exactly the same thing and they're like, oh my gosh, I really need to do this. Well, let me tell you something. Safety is so important. In my opinion, confidence is worth at least two tenths. So what you're doing here is you're investing in giving that young driver confidence to make that transition. And that's going to, to show up on the, on the stopwatch when it comes time for them to really go out there. So, and then you also have a five day class. So what's the next, what's the extra two days all about? The, the five-day class is, it, it, of course, it includes the first three-day class. And then on the fourth and fifth day, so we're, we do a little more in-depth testing, more at-speed testing. And if the student successfully completes our, all the requirements from the race director, the track promoter, our safety and, and situational awareness process, <clears throat> then they have the opportunity to actually race in a feature race at Mobile International Speedway in a full-blown pro late model. And that's all depending on how well they did in the three-day right. course, Rod. I mean, we, we're not going to set somebody up for failure on the five-day course if they're not ready for it. And I know that you guys had a young lady that just went through this named Sarah Beth Sullivan. And I, I tell you what, I actually watched both of the races. I think she's raced twice. And I watched both of the races. And I was extremely impressed. And then I saw a little piece from the owner of Mobile International Speedway talking about her being on the radio and how the way that you guys coach these drivers just blew her away. So, so real quickly, tell us all about that first driver, Sarah Beth Sullivan, and what your guys' takeaway was from that, that experience. Well, Rod, we really didn't know what to expect whenever Sarah Beth came for us for the first day, actually. 
And it was a learning experience from day one. I mean, teaching her all the safety aspects of the race car, bringing her up speed on all the safety aspects, of course. Um, but getting her to the track the second day, and we talked about working clutches. She had never been in a working clutch full body race car ever before. So it was a, uh, a learning curve and still is a learning curve. But I'm telling you, Rod, from the very first time she ever tried to take off and didn't succeed, which is understandable. I, I still made mistakes when I was further in my career. But listen, from what she can do now compared to what she did that very first day is unbelievable. And I am so impressed. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, I was I was blown away by watching that race. I mean, the girl stayed on the lead lap in her first full body car, and that's an accomplishment. So real quickly, we're just about out of time. When is the next available class? So, Rod, our next class is June 4th through 6th, which is upcoming pretty quick. And then after that is uh, June 18th through 20th. But what I would recommend is also is for the families and the driver of their choice is to go online at proactivemotorsports.com and look up our schedule and look and see what works for them. And then we will go from there and work out any type of arrangements that we need to. But it's all online at proactivemotorsports.com. All right. Awesome, guys. Great opportunity uh, for young drivers. I want to thank you guys for being with us tonight. And there you've got it. Right from the mouth of the two owners, Proactive Motorsports. Go check them out. Thank you for having us, Rod. Thanks, Rod. What a great program for young drivers. We're headed for our last commercial break, so stay right there and we'll return with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Hudson Bolger and you're watching Race Face Driver updates on Racing America. Welcome back. Casey Klein was in his number one pro late model at Hermiston Raceway in Hermiston, Oregon for the Duel in the Desert 75. During qualifying, Casey hit a large piece of asphalt that broke away from the track surface, but he still posted the sixth fastest time. On to the feature race, where Casey started on the pole and was leading before something in the engine let go. The team thinks it was caused by hitting that debris on the track during his qualifying lap. We caught up with Casey right after the incident to get his take on what happened. Hi, I'm Casey Klein. This weekend I was racing at Hermiston Speedway in Hermiston, Oregon. I had a good car in practice. I ended up qualifying sixth out of 20 cars. We had a six car invert. I ended up starting on the pole and on lap three, unfortunately my motor blew up, but I'd like to thank all my sponsors, Thamer Farms, Mountain View Polaris, uh, Sporty Steakhouse, Farmer Bean and Seed, Klein's Auto Cell, Race Face Advancement, Friends of Jacqueline, and everyone else who helped me on this car this weekend. Up next for Casey, State Line Speedway on June 4th. Caden Honeycutt was at Kennendale Speedway where he pulled double duty. First in the dirt factory stock, where he finished second in his heat race and then brought home a sixth place finish in the A main. This was the first race of the year that they did not park that car in victory lane in nine starts. Now to the dirt mod, where he suffered front end damage in the heat race and had to run the B main, where he started last, passed 11 cars, and finished fourth, which was good enough to transfer into the A main. Caden started 20th in the A main and finished eighth. On to night two at Heart of Texas Speedway, Caden was only running the dirt mod but unfortunately suffered a transmission failure in practice and missed his heat race. Had to start at the rear in the B main, but finished third. In the A main, he started 20th and brought home a 15th place finish. Up next for Caden, Cars Tour at Langley Speedway on Saturday. Landon Cox was at North Georgia QMA where the young seven-year-old Monroe Georgia driver put all three of his ultimate quarter midgets cars into the A mains. Landon finished second in Junior Honda, second in Junior 160, and second in Junior Animal. Up next for Landon, Music City QMA on June 11th. Other race face drivers seeing action this weekend include Joey East will return to the Arkham Menard Series West 
on the road course at Portland International Raceway on Saturday. Jesse Love will be back in the number 21 Mobile One Super Late Model at Jennerstown Speedway on June 4th. Jake Bowman returns to Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway in his number 25 Rackley War Pro Late Model on Saturday. Hudson Bulger will be at Atlanta Motor Speedway in his number 17 Legend car for the opening rounds of the INEX Thursday Thunder Series. Cole Denton will attempt to maintain his dominance at Atlanta Motor Speedway in rounds one and two of the Thursday Thunder Series in his number 46 Mellow Yellow Bandolero. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham, thanks for watching.